Okay, we're going to talk about something kind of basic, but I think it's important moving forward. So it's prime and composite numbers. When we talk about prime and composite numbers, we're talking about whole numbers. These are numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not fractions, not decimals, not percents. So a prime number is defined as a number with two factors and it's 1 and x, meaning 1 and itself. Composite is more than 2, okay? Because 1 is always a factor. Using the identity property, 1 times any number is always going to be that number. So some examples of prime numbers. Uh, and actually, I'm going to put this number up here, this number 1 up here, just to think about that, okay? Because I'm going to start with some other numbers. I'm going to start with 2. We would think 2 being an even number may be composite, but in fact, the factors are 2 and 1. So it's 1 and 2. The number 3 are 1 and 3. The number 5. These are two numbers that can be multiplied together to equal 1 times 2 equals 2. Sorry about that. 1 times 3 equals 3. Numbers multiplied together that are going to end up with our base number. So 1, 2, 3, 5, uh, we can go up to 47, we can go up to 37. Larger numbers, um, you just need to use your divisibility rules to determine quickly whether it's going to be a prime or a composite. A composite number has more than two factors. So the earliest we're going to see a composite number is going to be in the number four. And you may notice I'm writing this four and then a colon. And the way I always do it is I always start with one because one is always a factor. And then I go a space down here and I put the next number four. One times four is four. Now, what else multiplies to get to four? Well, two. I do not need to write two multiple times. I can just write it once. So it's one, two, and four. Uh, let's go to the number six, All right? You may be figuring this out already. One and six, and put my commas here, two and three. One times six is six, two times three is six. So putting them together as factor pairs, and I think of those as like ingredients of numbers, right? Okay? I'm gonna do one that's a little bit bigger here. Uh, I'm gonna go up with the number, say, 24, and you may start to see a pattern emerge, okay? So again, one, 24, put my comma. Now, it ends in a four, so I know it is multiple or divisible by two, two, and 12. And if you are struggling with knowing your factors or knowing your multiples right away, you can on the side just go and do your two, four, six, eight, so on, until you see if you can find that number. You can count on your fingers. Whatever it is that's working for you, we're just writing these pairs down. So it's two and 12. And then from two, I'm just gonna go right to my next number. Three is three a factor? Well, yeah, because two plus four is six and using my divisibility rules, I know that then it's going to be 3, and I know that 3 times 8. Um, and then the last one that I'm going to have here is 4 and 6. Now, you may notice that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 6, 8, 12. Well, I can skip 5 and 7 because I know that they aren't really going to fit in there at all. right? So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. Four and six are all going to be my factors of 24. And because I have more than two factors, I know that my number is composite. So we come back to the idea of this number one. Is one going to be a composite? Well, we know, oops, we know that it's not a composite. Is it going to be a prime number? Well, what can I multiply together times one to get to one? There's only one option. It's the number one, right? So one is neither prime nor composite. One is its own sort of entity. Okay. All right, guys, thank you very much. If you have any questions, just let me know.